Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you today on this sheet that I just finished for Topps El Chete and Topps Backpacker Bowie. Got a couple accessories on here as well, and I'm going to get into uh, all the nitty gritty. Yep. <sighs> it's going to be one of those days. All right, all the nitty gritty about what this sheet's got on it. So let's check this out. Obviously, it is set up as a Baldrick system, but it's not set up as a standard Baldrick. Uh, this one's going to Jacob out in Michigan. Jacob asked me if I could set it up as a Baldrick that would have a, sort of a, a, an orientation more vertical than horizontal. So uh, I'm wearing it on my front, obviously you'd wear it to the side, uh, but the typical, the typical setup would have the rear attach point further back so that you would end up with more of like a horizontal balance uh, but this one I actually uh, brought up a little bit. I just attached it to the tip of the backpacker bowie sheath. And you do have the ability to kind of like orient it like this, but you can feel that the weight is a little more comfortable when you're doing um, kind of vertical like this. You also have the option, if you really want to go straight up vertical, you can attach both of your clips to the forward D-ring. And then you have, you know, it's a little bit less stable because it, it's only one attach point, so it almost has a tendency to pivot. But if you like it better like that, you can certainly do it. Um, and there is one other feature on the back that is really cool. And if you guys saw the, the El Chete sheath I did for my buddy BJ Hill, um, I did one of these on there for him as well. And all it is is a little, it's a nylon loop. I've got it adjustable for whatever belt size you've got. Uh, this is, I don't actually know what the measurements are, but um, anyway, you've got three options for which one you want to snap into here. This is just a nylon thing that I made. Um, so you, you put this on your belt. Actually, why don't I just demonstrate for you. Essentially what this does is stabilizes the sheath. It's a belt anchor and the idea behind it is that if you want your sheath to stay put, hanging around your shoulder, but also, you know, roughly in the same location on your hip and not go swinging around, then you'd have the option. You can see I've clipped that around my belt. And now this clip here, this HK style clip, can fit around this D ring. I'm just going to clip into that D-ring and now this is going to stay you know wherever I wherever I put that loop on my belt uh, so actually let me switch back to the two attach points here it's a little more comfortable for me all right so now let's say I need to grab my knife you know if I'm doing something one-handed maybe I'm bending over a sapling to chop it I can grab this out of here now to be perfectly honest little to be perfectly honest with you you can actually do a thumb push and draw this without the belt anchor and it works really well I was pretty impressed by how well I mean all right you can see if I was just gonna grip it and rip it there would be all this motion here watch this that's just using the thumb push the sheath stays put um, that's how smooth the draw is on this thing in any event, if for whatever reason you did need to grip it and rip it, or maybe you're just doing some work, you bend over, whatever, you just don't want the sheath to go falling and flopping all around, um, this belt anchor keeps it in place. Now, as far as keeping the anchor, that loop in place on your belt, um, there's a lot of different things you can do. What I would do is go, actually you can see what I've done here. This loop actually just keeps my Cobra buckle from passing through my the belt loop on my pants all I do is I go behind the belt diagonally through a belt loop and then I snap it and that just makes sure that the uh, that the nylon loop this little snap stays play in in the same spot on my belt it doesn't travel around my waist it stays where that belt loop has it anchored so same sort of concept you'd probably want to try with this and see if you have any luck with it um, so all right so that's pretty much that you've seen 
the Chete is a very smooth draw. Um, you've seen how that belt anchor works. I'm going to take it off before I forget to send it to him. You know what? We have to unclip it first. Sorry, these things are a little bit hard to maneuver. All right, there we go. Okay, so got that. Um, that's definitely not an essential piece of equipment here. It's just something, uh, just a little add-on that I think is nice. And you know what? If you end up not liking this specifically, you still have that D-ring, so you could you could tie some paracord or whatever else. Uh, but you can definitely make a good anchor uh, anchor point work. So, <clears throat> all right. What else does this thing have on? It's got the Tops Backpacker Bowie, which is a nice little companion knife. Um, very interesting, and this has a good click going back in. There's not a ton of material to grip onto down low on the handle. It would be much easier to go up here, but obviously you'd be sacrificing having a good grip on your knife before drawing. So try not to do that. We did have to do it a little bit. I keep saying we. I had to do it a little bit with uh, El Chete because El Chete doesn't have anything up here to grip onto. This is not enough, uh, not enough contour on the handle scales to mold Kydex around it and get solid retention. So I did have to go up onto this first major point and totally cover that index choil up here so that's a little bit regrettable as far as check sheets go but let's check out the alternative this is the factory sheet now, as far as factory sheets go uh you know for especially production companies guys that are making like thousands of knives a month tops i think has the best factory sheets on the market um best i've seen anyway a lot of people complain about them say they're just not that great um, you know, that's true. They're not a custom sheath for sure. But as far as something that'll get you through until you have the money to, to, uh, you know, hire a guy like me to do a sheath for you, you know, I think these are perfectly fine and, um, they're definitely serviceable. So let's talk about though, what you see a lot of guys that are doing sheaths for El Chete or for other, you know, Prangs or machetes or Kukri's uh, or knives like the Topps SXB or tracker, you know, whatever. Knives like that, people tend not to try to do a full taco or full pancake design, even though they're stronger. The reason why they go with a flimsy design like this, I say it's flimsy because it's, physically it's just, it's flimsy. You can see I can, I shouldn't be able to easily flex the whole sheet like this or touch, you know, I just, I'm not a fan of that. Um, anyway, the reason you see people do that is because this actually makes it easier to finish your sheath. It makes it so much faster. Uh, you can see that Chete, you don't have to worry about that sweeping edge. You don't have to deal with that clearance in there. It just is going to work because the top is open and so as you go in you can actually see when the knife seats in for retention. You see that? Before, before it goes back you can see it comes up a little bit. Um, so instead of having to, you know, deal with all of the issues of spacing and clearance when you do a taco style sheath for a knife with this kind of sweeping edge to it, um, you just do something with an open back like this. It's much easier. It's much quicker. It looks okay. You know, so a lot of people are perfectly content making or using this style sheath. Good on you. Keep doing it. I don't care. Uh, but for me... I gotta have a taco style sheath or a pancake, you know, preferably taco. Taco is the strongest design out there. Uh, but this thing just blows that one out of the water in terms of strength and durability. Um, so this is actually a layer of 093 flat black kydex with a layer of 093 black basket weave on top of it. And all of the OD green on here is also 093. So this thing is pretty rugged. Uh, definitely a solid sheath. You can see how thick that is down near the tip. Um, so yeah, very happy with how this came out and yeah. All right. What else do we have on it? We've got an Exotac Nano Striker XL down near the bottom and, uh, the retention on it is sufficient to retain your Nano Striker without shock cord. You'll probably never actually, you know, need the shock cord. Unlike a normal ferro rod, this one, it has a fixed housing 
inside which the ferro rod is stored. So you're not going to have to deal with the traditional uh, ferro rod in, uh, issue that you run into with uh, Kydex holders is that you need shock cord because as you use the rod, the rod gets smaller. So then it just wants to fall out and you need something like the elastic shock cord to help retain it. With this, obviously the outside is always going to be the same size, so you're probably never going to need it. Um, but just in case, you know, maybe you have a super hot day and it swells up just a little bit. <laughs> I doubt that would ever happen, but whatever the case may be, uh, you do have that shock cord on there. If you really don't want it, pretty easy to cut off. Um, you got an SE tin holder here down near the tip. Put the logo on that. I think that's looking really nice. And how this is used, it's technically a two-way draw, but if you draw out the top, you're probably going to run into the tip of, well, you're definitely going to run into, it's, it's just not comfortably going to come out there. You'd have to like lift it and do some real awkward stuff. So anyway, to get this guy out, you just want to push it out the bottom like so, and then you grab it and pull it. It's very easy to use, uh, but at the same time, this is a very surprisingly strong holder. It has a lot of retention on it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. I'll give you one good look here at the back of it. I think it came out looking nice. Pretty cool. Just how I create some of my uh, D-ring holders here. A very similar style, almost identical to how I would create it for a dangler. If it were, uh, you know, if this were a dangler sheath, I'd have that D-ring positioned up here with the dome on top so you could suspend it from the leather like so. so. Alright guys, well, that is pretty much all I have to show you on this sheath. Um, I'll give you this giant Chete click one more time. And actually, speaking of the Chete click, <laughs> Jacob, you're going to want to uh, pay attention when you see your El Chete back in, just make sure that the top's backpack or Bowie isn't starting to creep out on you. Let me show you what I mean. The click on the Chete is so big that it actually, I think that vibration starts to let the backpacker Bowie creep out of its sheath. I have never seen this before. Uh, this is really strange, but I put it in a couple times and, uh, all right, watch, watch where that Watch where that screw is. You see that? You see it creeping out? It's slow. But it's almost totally out of there now. So, anyway, it would probably take a dozen or more times resheathing your chete before it would ever be in danger of knocking this guy loose, but just pay attention to that. Um, I have tinkered with it after I noticed that it was doing it. I messed with the retention to try to make the click less on chete and also make the retention stronger on the backpacker Bowie, uh, but it still does it a little bit, so I don't know if there's any real way around that. <sighs> oh, there it is. Can't get away with it. Not one stinking video these days. So just yawning all the time. Anyway, uh, I really like this sheath. I'm happy with how it came out. Jacob, I hope you like this, brother. I appreciate your patience. Jacob's been waiting for like three months to get a sheath. Um, but he told me that quality is worth waiting for. So, Jacob, I really appreciate that, man. And for the rest of you out there who are waiting on your stuff, I know I'm a little bit backed up and behind schedule, but I promise it's coming. And you're going to get really nice results out of it. So, all right, guys. If you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my channel, I ask you to subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of these knives. Let me know what you think of this sheath. Let me know what you think of uh, the slightly vertical baldric versus horizontal. And, uh, and the belt anchor concept. I know I didn't demonstrate it perfectly here because I didn't wrap it around the actual belt loop on my pants. But uh, I think you get the gist, obviously. So, all right, guys. Comment down below, just give me some thoughts, feedback, whatever. Share this with all your buddies, and definitely stick around for the next one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. God bless.